Hi, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your general reading for August. I'm on the final stretch. Yay. Um, let's see. I'm going to be using the, what do you call it? These? <laughs> I can't think of the name of them. And uh, I'm going to be clarifying with Levita Sibila. And we will be pulling, um, of course, a Golden Nostradamus card, but we'll also um, pull an Angel Answer card. Uh, don't forget that I've got my August 2020 one-hour reading special. It's uh, half price. It's normally like 65 bucks, so you can get it for like 35 Way hold it. And um, that'll be going on until August 19th. So if you choose to... Um, you want to get a reading or if you've never had a reading with me and would like to get a reading for with me now's your opportunity to try to get one um half price so what you'll need to do is i can never get this right uh click that i that's going to show up there that'll take you directly over to my website when you get there go to the main menu you should see tarot consultations there's a little arrow next to that Click it, and there's a pull-down menu. So then you get to see all of the types of readings that I offer, okay? Um, website members, I'm going to be sending out a moon report later on this afternoon. And then I got to go know, learn how to use my miter saw. I bought myself a miter saw for Christmas, y'all, because I like woodworking. Remember how I told y'all how um, I... Um, in my fantasy life, I'm not, like, rich and famous, but I'm a badass, like you know, woodworker. So I've got a lot of projects around my house that I want to do. I want to put some shelving and stuff up. I want to build myself an altar table and a, a working altar table. And so there's a lot of things that I want to do. Every time I go to the hardware store and I spend more money in the hardware store that I spend on anything because I love the hardware store. So every time I go to the hardware store, I buy myself some wood. <laughs> so my garage is full of wood, right? I just don't know how to cut it. So I bought myself a, a miter saw. And so today my daughter and I are going to take it out of the box. My friend was supposed to come and help me, but then he called and said he had to go for his coronavirus test. I was like, no. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm going to figure out how to do it myself. So we're going to take it out, uh, look at it, we got to put the blade on there. So I want to make sure that that's going to be on there correctly. So it don't fly off when I'm trying to do something and kill myself. Um, and then um, hopefully I'm going to be able to start utilizing some of my wood and my brand new saw. I buy more power tools. My next one is a Sawzall. That's my next one. But I got drills, impact drivers, circular saws, compact, large, miter saws. I also got myself a miter toss, uh, saw table. And then the next thing after the Sawzall, I want a nail gun. Bet that, okay? I'm probably the only chick in America that y'all know who love the hardware store. I'd rather go shop at the hardware store than to buy shoes, to buy clothes, even to buy food. I love the hardware store. So always have, even as a kid. So anyway, especially the plumbing section, you know why? Because it's shiny over there. I love that shit. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started with the reading. I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but anyway, y'all bear with me, okay? I just get excited when I start talking about power tools. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me turn the camera around <clears throat> because as I was shuffling and meditating on your sign, Taurus, you had a card pop out, all right? And if the camera shuts off, which it's been doing lately, and I still can't figure out how to make it not do that, but if it shuts off, don't worry, I'll click it back on and we'll go you know i'll continue so your card that popped out was the seven of wands now i love this card oh my god i'm choking myself with this incense uh i love this card because what the card implies to me is that you got a lot of stuff going on right and but you see those six wands down at the bottom if you know the image of the Six of Wands card, that's somebody riding along on a horse. In other words, it says that there's a victory. You've accomplished something. You've overcome first the idea to do it, the decisions about whether or not you should do it or how you should do it, actually taking it forward with the three, getting it to a place where it's stable with the four, then encountering problems with the five. This says that you have gotten over those problems, you know, but now you got a lot of stuff because you're moving it into the final phase, right? And what I love about this card more than anything, though, sometimes this card can be about a bunch of distractions. 
But what I love most about this card is that it says that no matter what it is that you're trying to beat back, you're actually in a better position than you realize because you're standing above the fray. Now, <clears throat> the fact that he's got on two shoes, okay, so he's got on a tall boot, oh, wait, 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 and then he's got on a shoe. A lot of times for me, that just means that you had to get up in a hurry and do something, you know, like, oh shit, and you just grabbed the first thing and got up and went to work, right? But there's an actual meaning for that, and um, I can't remember it, but I ran across it in a book that I, that I had, um, or that I found, and so I've added it into my other thing. Let me see here. Let me see if I can find it. It's like the Seven of Wands. I don't even think I wrote it down in here. Hold on. The card depicts someone of a strong character, right? Where is it with the shoes? I know I put it in here, and maybe I didn't. I thought that I did. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, yeah, I didn't put it in here. I got it somewhere. I thought I put it in my... That means you have to go back and edit that page. That's all that means. So with that being said, um, just know that whatever this is, you are or will be in a better position than you realize, okay? So we're going to go ahead and... Oh, damn and there's your confirmation that what I just said is right. <laughs> there's our Ace of Swords. Now, the Ace of Swords is um, a funny card because it can, it represents several things. As you know, swords, wands represent your fighting spirit, okay? Your determination and your focus. How bad do you want it, right? Um, the swords always represent thoughts, belief, perceptions, ideas, even concepts. But the Ace of Swords is this idea, Aces are the excessive degrees of everything. In other words, it has a lot of power in it. And you have to be in the right place uh, and space, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in order to take uh, advantage of opportunities when they come to you. One of the old um, interpretations of this card is a marriage that's depicted by the uh, crown over this uh, sword here. So swords, particularly the ace, can be, there's a truth that is available to you. But as we know, swords can be double-edged, so sometimes that truth can be painful. In terms of the marriage, marriages are, are at their most basic concept, they are contractual issues. You stand up before, first you announce it to everybody, usually you put it in the paper, you send out invitations, you tell people, that's your public contract or your public declaration, right? Then you actually go down and apply for the marriage. Then you actually get married and sign the book. And then you start setting up house together and getting things in both of your names. But that is a contractual issue because you have both promised to love and, and honor and through thickness and in thin and health and illness and all of those things, right? So let's see what's on the back side of this ace and then we'll get the rest of the cards down. But like I said, it can be double-edged. It can be, you know, not very good news or painful truth. So do keep that in mind. All right, so here we go. One more rifle. Rest of the cards. Nine of Pentacles. Oh, I like that card. The Lovers. Ooh. The Emperor, now this card has been coming out a lot, but I think what it's talking to me about, because the cards are funny sometimes, um, they will talk about not necessarily people, but the planets that they represent. So this represents the planet Mars, and y'all have been hearing me say, Mars is afoot and he's doing some stuff, okay? So Mars for me is that planet that, that's, that talks about action, drive, force, aggression, anger, heat, speed, uh, war, and warlike postures, okay? So he's out doing some stuff. So I'm not exactly sure if this is telling me that it is a person or the planet. I'll lay the rest of the cards to see what the, what the guys have to say. 
there's the three of, well, I think it's a person, but not necessarily. The three of swords. The four of wands. Now that's interesting. Because now I have two fours here, okay? The six of swords. Hmm. And the two of pentacles. Well. And I also have two sixes. The lovers is a six. So, right in the center, I have this emperor. So, I have, let's count them, two wands, yes, three swords, two pentacles, and two major arcana cards, okay? Now, there's some kind of decision here. What the twos always represent is some kind of choice, an option, a duality, a crossroads, uh, the Two of Pentacles can sometimes be the idea of juggling two jobs, working two jobs at one time, you know, struggling with money and finances. And to me, necessarily, this is not necessarily, it's not saying that. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because the nine is sitting over the two. Okay? That gives me seven pentacles. And so what I'm looking at is this idea of waiting for something. Okay? So, what's underneath the deck? It is the eight of cups now is it neptune 29 has been talking to I've, I've been giving you all the wrong date on the eclipse the great american eclipse it was not 2018 it was 2017 okay but that happened in the sign of leo the lion's gate the new moon that's coming up on the 18th and 19th is going to be a new moon in leo so this new moon is going to be touching on those same points that happened across that eclipse, all right? And uh, this is my only eclipsed moon in the deck of cards, all right? That's what this is. That's what this represents. The Eight of Cups is the card of, uh, it represents the energy of knowing that things no longer serve you and you have to leave something that you are very emotionally tied to or you have been emotionally tied to and invested in and you're walking away from it, or somebody's walking away, they, I think what always strikes me the most about this card is the person is walking away in the middle of the night. They don't even have no bags. All they got is their little staff for support, and they are walking away from these things, okay? Um, in fact, it is an eight, and August is the eighth month. Uh, in addition, with those eight cups, I don't know if this is eight months or maybe even eight years. It, it feels more like months. The cups actually do represent the month. So, eight months, okay, that this is, you've been going, I don't want to say through it, but, you know, let's say up until this point. Now, two fours represent two things. Uh, the first meaning of the two fours is that it is about a safe and secure time period, yes. The other meaning of the two fours represents uh, a change of address or a house move, maybe even redecoration, okay? And to me, this card implies sometimes the idea of moving house, okay? See that snail? Snails take their homes with them when, when they go someplace. This tells me, if that's the case, that right now where you may be living is actually a pretty swanky kind of a place, <laughs> okay? You've got all of your coins, you've got your finery on, you're standing in your backyard with your grapes, and grapes can, you know, make wine, they make, you know, you can eat them, you can use them, the juice for dye, you can make jams and marmalades, you can do all sorts of things with grapes. And grapes uh, take a long time to grow. So the Nine of Pentacles to me is the card of having buckled down done the things that you needed to do and now you find yourself in a place that's actually pretty good it's about taming the wild beast see how that has the okay the hawk has the but there's something i don't think that maybe you you planned for okay um the lover's card can represent two people and i think there may be three people here and the reason why i say that is i have three figures in this card and i have three figures in that boat, okay? Um, 
this card is the shacking up card but can imply a marriage it implies any kind of event in which there's a celebration and something to celebrate so it could be a graduation uh, a marriage um, you know you bought a home uh, anything that you can celebrate that you've done for many of you this was a struggle and a choice and I think what the cards are telling me is that you have maybe you've moved in with someone or the plan is to move in with someone I would say for some of you you moved in with someone or you invited someone to come and live in your home with you but that shit's not working out now <laughs> okay um, the lovers also represents this this thing of a choice okay you see there's some kind of thorn stuck between them and to me the angel above Gabrielle is trying to heal this situation you do find some kind of stability or where things seem to be exactly where they are but suddenly here down the center somebody decides that double-edged sword yeah you know I may care for you yeah I may love you but it ain't working out for me reason why I say that the emperor is given the side eye can y'all see him giving the side eye to that lovers that's a choice okay he's torn between something because sometimes this card could be about being torn within yourself remember I talked about those twos that duality someone or something opposing you you opposing yourself because you are of maybe two minds and we see that somebody leaps and this speaks to going from troubled waters to smooth waters what I like about this card is <clears throat> right now those swords are all pointed down so whatever thoughts you have in a sense they're kind of protecting you as you go through this journey but do recognize that once you get to the other side you're still gonna have those same thoughts does that make any sense okay sometimes this can be somebody actually coming along to help you out and sometimes this is this man here is the universe moving you on to the next phase the two of Pentacles is just that this is about being all this all a sea uh, see how they're tossed around on the on the waters on the waves back there this is trying to keep everything in place not to drop a single ball okay but that there's a choice to me it seems like this is something that's consent continuous so in other words that's been going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth the three of swords is just that the three of swords is the idea of some kind of sorrow regret pain or heartache maybe somebody hurt your feelings with what they said to you okay an attack on your feeling center um, it can sometimes indicate bitterness as well but <clears throat> what these two cards are telling me and the way that they're falling is that even though maybe you prepared even though you may have you know your, your situation at one point was good through some type of loss or heartache fights or whatever disagreements separations for sure because that's what this card is um, you may be a bit off balance okay but you still got those seven swords which means that ultimately things will work out okay right and what I mean by that is you you, you planted enough seeds in that seven to know that um, and, and the coins are not just necessarily about finances so when I say you're going to be okay it's about the actual doing of things and so in other words um, you're going to be okay in what you do or how you do it as you go past this okay now what I want to do is take a look at these cards as they relate you notice I don't have any any um, court cards in this okay um, so I'm gonna take a look at these um, pip cards here as they relate to these two cards okay so the seven of wands let's see if the seven of wands tells me anything it does not the ace of swords find my swords here I think I moved the swords around when I put my book together I'm not exactly sure but that's the four hold on let me look at the ace with the two of pentacles 
It indicates that financial gains and success and victory are yours. But you're going to have to give up something. I don't know if this is a divorce uh, or the idea of having to split up property. You know, maybe even custody. I don't know. Yeah? Okay? Because this implies that this woman's wealthy or at least well-to-do. But she did it through her own hard work. Okay? This could be a situation where you invite a male to come live with you. And this is for same sex or um, heterosexual couples. You invited somebody to come in. You were in love. You thought everything was working out. But you were the one who was in a better financial position than they were. Even though they may have presented this to you. Now, as a um, character, the emperor is known as the father of the tarot. So if this ain't, you know, your your children, your father's, your children's dad, your baby daddy, okay, then <clears throat> he can be someone who's um, has some kind of qualities that remind you like of your father. But he will also or can be um, a, a teacher, a mentor, a patron. Uh, he would also be somebody who has some kind of perhaps not military skills or not military, be in the military, but is very good at using strategy and tactics, okay? But he can be a hard character to live with if he's being in this negative state. Okay, so that's the two of pentacles. So if this is a divorce, you know, you're going to lose a little bit. You may have to juggle things around, but it doesn't portend the end of the world. Okay, in terms of your security, meaning your physical security, where you live, are you going to eat, going to be able to pay your bills, is it going to be safe, those kinds of things, all right? I don't see anything of the Ace of Swords. Let me look at the Nine of Pentacles. <clears throat> Next to the Emperor, it may be implying that a position... It may be implying that a promotion or position of responsibility will be offered to you. This position will entail benefits, but you are asked to consider all facets before taking on the position. Before choosing to take on this role, it is important to consider the added duties or responsibilities involved. Okay? In other words, you invited this person to come in or y'all got together and now it's just a bit more than you might be able to handle. When it shows up, <clears throat> is it the Nine of Pentacles with three swords cards? It is also telling you not to spend money frivolously or carelessly. Be careful with money and financial matters and keep a rein on your spending. Maybe this person came in and just kind of ate up all of your, your finances or used your resources. <clears throat> if you're living with somebody and they're not contributing, but they're trying to be the emperor and be all Mr. Important, but they ain't really contributing nothing but penis, okay? <laughs> That means you're paying more money for food, you're paying more money for electricity, for cable, for gas, for all of those things. So you got somebody utilizing your resources that ain't really giving nothing back, okay? And I don't care how good penis is, right? If your money funny, that's going to make prob even more problems in the relationship. All right, so the three of swords. Sorry if I offended any of y'all, but that's the truth. The three of swords next to the emperor. It is asking you not to become upset or hurt by another's harsh criticism or judgment. You are to remain positive and strong. Do not bother to pursue or change things. Just continue to forge ahead. It may be a message not to pursue or try to change the existing situation. Rather, begin anew and have no fear as all will work out accordingly. It implies that although you may be feeling emotionally hurt by what you consider to be unfair treatment, judgment, or harsh criticism, take heed in the message that these feelings and circumstances will pass and you will, with hindsight, see the lessons learned during your time of anguish. Right. So this could be the idea that, you know, even though you're doing all of the work, it ain't good enough for whoever the hell this person is. They always got something negative to say. Remember I said it could be difficult to deal with. When the um, this card appears with the lovers and other swords, it is a strong indication that a close relationship is coming to an end. We see it. <clears throat> okay. Four of Wands. 
nothing about the four of wands the six of swords nothing about the six of swords and now the two of pentacles again the two of pentacles with the ace of swords it is indicating that you need to keep a tight rein on your budget at this time as overspending on frivolous items will lead to disappointment and misery think twice prior to purchasing non-essential items you are asked to reevaluate any new considerations or plans it is a message to consider all relevant spending and do not be do not overspend or be flippant about your financial issues at this time and I think the reason why that's telling you the cards are has, have given you that message a couple of times is because unbeknownst to you, either you're going to have to leave or this person's going to leave you. Either way, that shit's going to cost money, right? So, <laughs> what I want to take a look at is why this emperor is giving the side eye to the lovers, Okay. That's what we want to, to uh, sometimes I have seen the three of swords show up when you're about to get some news and the news is going to be painful. Okay. Um, and indeed it will affect your home. Oh, I didn't give you the meaning of the two sixes. The two sixes can speak to instability. I'm sorry. Self-confidence issues are causing instability in the relationship. He may think he's all that, but he ain't, okay? <laughs> That's first and foremost. The other meaning of the two sixes say justifiable faith and trust in your partner. Well, that's where you may be right now, but I can promise you you're about to get some news that's not going to be pleasant. So don't spend any money on anything that ain't absolutely necessary because your household finances and your and your, situ your living situation is about to change. Costanza, Superbia, and the Morte. That is absolutely astounding because what the cards are saying are this. This has been a long-term situation, one that hasn't changed. In other words, you may have persevered through this, right? In other words, you've just been putting up with it and putting up with it and putting up with it, right? And not saying anything. But the fact, this card is actually one of the luckiest cards in the deck. And it says that no matter how the situation may look from the outside, whatever negativity is going on, you are protected. This is like a divine protection kind of a thing, okay? It is also associated with the love of luxury, okay? People who like to, you know, have expensive things and look good and fine perfume and great cars and eat good and travel well okay it's associated with that also whenever i see this card to me the card always uh portends it speaks about the male of of the uh, situation because the male peacock is the most brightly colored okay so there's a touch of vanity that can also be associated with this card um, it, it does have a connection loosely to possessions and money and things of that nature, the material realm. Well, this card says that all that shit's coming to an end. The Morte card is like the cosmic scissors, right? It comes and cuts the situation, usually because either someone has done something or said something which has completely altered, altered the relationship and it will never, ever go back to the same way. Additionally, if this person has been sucking up all of your resources, okay, then you need to ask yourself, really, what are you getting out of the relationship? It's not that we want to get with, I mean, some of y'all might be, you know, all about the money and all of that and whatnot, but you really want to have somebody in your life that appreciates who you are, who values you and not just the things that you have. That's why love and money are two different sides of the same coin, because they equate to value. Would you rather have somebody who values you and wants to be with you because of who you are, what kind of person you are, and what you bring to the table? Or do you want somebody who just wants to be with you because you can make them appear to be the emperor? Okay? So that's it. And honestly, either you're going to have to make the decision 
to kick this person to the curb or there's going to be some kind of argument and the person's going to leave anyway. Maybe they don't found somebody who got more money than you. I don't know. So let's um, formulate a question for the Golden Nostradamus card. Either way, I think you're going to be okay. All right. I think you've just been waiting around and waiting around for the person to do the right thing. And they're not going to. Because they're all about themselves. Aries, uh, this is the sign of Aries and the, and the sign of Mar and the planet Mars. And Aries is about, it's the first house. So it represents the ego. It represents the self. It also represents the way you present yourself to people. Uh, out in the world. So it's your name, your face, your shape, your reputation, your profile, your online things. That's it. This person wants to be seen like that. But they're doing it off of your dime. Okay? <laughs> don't let them do that. And I don't know if maybe some of you finally got that, uh, that, uh, what do you call it? That promotion. And the promotion, now you got more money spent, now they want more stuff. Yeah? Okay. Well, no. Because we don't know what's coming down the pipe for the rest of this year. So, here's your one card. If I'm not mistaken, that's the eagle. It may be a griffin. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to find out right now. But there it is. It is number 15. Oh, wow. With, without wealth virtue and nobility be warned are like seaweed on a deserted beach scorned mm. the eagle represents your pride generosity and nobility of the soul which you must develop and then manifest to everyone be noble or seek this virtue in yourself so see he trying to be noble but he really isn't he's all about himself Let's pull one angel answer card. Now, this could even be like a boss or something, okay, that you're dealing with who thinks he's a shit but not, all right? Maybe taking credit for things that you've been doing, working on for a long time, and maybe this is your cue that maybe you should find something else to do. Again, this is why the cards are telling you, don't spend all your money, <laughs> okay? Don't be buying frivolous crap. Save it. Because something is coming down the pipe in which you're going to need it. Angel answer. It is the take action card. See? I'm telling you, the cards don't lie. They don't lie. The time has come to take action. Your angels are waiting for you to take the next step so they can assist you along the path to your dreams. Do away with procrastination and uncertainty because in your heart you know what to do, so get going. Whether you are focused upon career, relationships, or some other topic, the fulfillment of your wishes isn't going to just fall into your lap. You must be actively focused on the pursuit of what you want. And I think some of you are going to come to that realization and this is going to occur, I would say within the next week or so, give or take a few uh, days on either side of this new moon that's coming up. That's what I have for you, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. I hope those messages helped. And until next time, namaste.